What's going on, everybody? This is a new episode of the Bitcoin Source. I have a special guest in the room in the we building right now. Make sure that we give him a great introduction into the Bitcoin Source and Bitcoin Conversation. So to get things started, um, could you actually introduce yourself to the world and to the audience and let people know who you are? Hey, everyone. I'm very excited to, to be here today. My name is Zonda Futsing and I'm from Cameroon, uh, West, West Africa. And, uh, I've been very, very much in the Bitcoin space for, for, for like, say, seven years now. So it's like since 2017. Yeah, something like that. But, uh, I really started going down the rabbit hole only back in 2020. So when I first read, um, um, the Bitcoin standard, then I read to one lesson, then I read, uh, layered money. And then I read the sovereign individual, so everything like completely changed my head. And then I, I really readjusted my life mission to just focus on telling the rest of the people around me, most part of Africa, about um, the good news of Bitcoin. So sometimes um, I find myself a lot of times, a lot of times, like 80% 80, 80 of my conversations with people is about uh, Bitcoin. And uh, it, it's been like that. And through that, I got to work with uh, Paxful. So uh, at Paxful, I worked as a senior marketing consult, a senior marketing associate for Francophone Africa, because uh, I'm from Cameroon and Cameroon is a bilingual country. Uh, we speak both French and English. So it was a big, very big opportunity for me to, to tell the people of French Africa what what this thing about Bitcoin is and stuff like that. So I had the opportunity to travel to different French African countries. It was a really great experience. And it was through this um, experience that I realized that um, a lot of people don't really understand Bitcoin from the get-go, which is very normal because it's technology first. Then secondly, the whole thing is complicated. It's smart, it's energy. There's a whole, then a lot of moving parts. So to tell somebody, especially people who are very busy and stuff like that about Bitcoin, it's really uh, crazy sometimes in their head. And we live in a society right now in French Africa where there's been a lot of scams in the name of Bitcoin. So people create platforms and then they say, oh, you're going to be trading in Bitcoin. Meanwhile, it has nothing to do with Bitcoin. So people have this negative connotation. So it makes it really complicated where you stand in front of people and they want to talk about Bitcoin and stuff. So I had to think of a better way to, to like approach this and then let them not feel that this Bitcoin thing is, is actually what they've been thinking about and stuff like that. Yeah, but this whole thing is, I was really looking for a strategy to, to make people like it. And at the same time, they want to learn it, right? So uh, maybe I'm already getting too far into the next question and stuff like that. But yeah, that's a, that's a bit of my, my, my journey. It's been an uh, interesting, interesting ride. I would never have ever had my life in a better way uh, if I didn't discover uh, Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, you know, anytime that I speak to people from Africa, it's always great to really hear some of these different perspectives. But, you know, we're familiar and we're aware that Africa has tons of natural resources. It has tons of natural solar, wind and hydropower, which can definitely help on the mining aspect of Bitcoin. But when you talk about decolonized money, I truly understand what you're saying because it allows that freedom to transact pair to pair. As we know, um, a lot of the subcontinent, you know, countries in Africa, you're dealing with a lot of Ponzi schemes, a lot of scams, a lot of money laundering or loans. And a lot of people that are living in poverty are trying to gain access to whether it be remittances or just day to day money that they can use to buy rice or chicken or meat or oil or something. So when you put Bitcoin into the mix of Africa, you see people like Jack Maulers with Strike, um, Jack Dorsey with Gridless Mining in Kenya. There's all these different entrepreneurs that are really looking into Africa and trying to find a way to intertwine Bitcoin into the protocol. So when I speak to an individual such as yourself, Zonda, I always think about, you know, people on the front lines, people that are um, well-informed and well-educated about this protocol and how they can use that to kind of evangelize um, for Africans in the continent. Hold on. I want to talk about um, something that, you know, I think a lot of the audience might not know about you, which is your love for Austrian economics. And, 
Can you explain how Bitcoin aligns with the principles of the school of thought and, you know, what unique aspects of Bitcoin make this such an appealing monetary system from an Austrian economics perspective? Yeah, so that's a, that's a really a good question, you know. And, you know, while I was reading a lot, while I was going down the rapid hole of uh, Bitcoin, I get to I got to discover in economics, especially uh, uh, von Mises and uh, Hayek, right? So this, these two people, when I read the books that they, they came out with, I said to myself, like, oh, why, why, why am I just seeing this just now? Why are principles like this not taught in school? Why uh, are free markets not everywhere? Because free markets are, are things that have, are, are systems that have created um, um, different uh, uh, prosperity in, 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 in different economies for people who have practices and stuff like that. So for me, Austrian economics and, and, and Bitcoin, right? So there was this uh, video that I was, I was watching, I think it was uh, Hayek that was speaking about, um, he, like he predicted Bitcoin. I think that was, that should be like in the 70s or 80s, I cannot remember, but he was talking about um, there'll be a time when there, there will be a monetary system Government or the the, the 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 central banks could not detect, and it would be some sort of a sly way to bypass the the central system or something like that. And that, and right there, it was he was discovering, he was explaining uh, what Bitcoin is actually today, because Bitcoin is that system that uh, no no um, centralized system can put it can put it down or something like that. So <clears throat> the, the one of the things that struck with me uh, with uh, Austrian economics is the, the principle of always um, creating value first, right? So you don't necessarily have to, you don't necessarily ask for what you cannot, what you don't deserve, or you don't necessarily get to a room and then you begin to, to beg or you begin to, to feel like you, you need people to first maybe give you something, maybe people you need to push around. So for, it taught me in another way, value for value and value for value creates better economies and better economies create better people better people create better societies and better societies make our lives and everything the environment everything uh, seem to be everything to be good right so for me it's it's more like a lifestyle now that i'm putting in almost everything i'm doing and made me discover really really uh, amazing people that i'm, I'm living by by most uh, the, the philosophy, like somebody that uh, uh, um, her name is um, Ian Ran. I don't know how to pronounce the yeah, but she she just really I discovered her books um, recently. I mean, I, I just want to every day I make sure I get some time. I just dive in and then get what I can get out of that because I want to be able to to share this with people. I want to share this with people, and because I believe that th these things about Australian economics and um, the virtue of selfishness needs to be taught in schools, right? You need to be able to be, we live in a society where people feel like they are for us to be able to create a better society. Everybody needs to exert some energy, which is one of the uh, uh, core fundamentals of uh, Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah that, that answer was awesome. And, you know, um, I've been digging into Austrian economics myself, and one of my favorite books is Human Action by Mises. I think that that book is really instrumental in getting people to understand first principles of why the money system is broken and how Bitcoin can provide a solution to that. But Zonda, you know, what, what I find really beautiful and interesting as well is, you know, Bitcoin is gaining this massive popularity in Africa, but it still faces a lot of challenges regarding scalability and transaction speed. So what are your thoughts on these issues? And do you see any potential solutions that could enhance Bitcoin's usability in everyday transactions in Africa? Yeah. So um, one of the major uh, solutions that really uh, made Bitcoin like that really sets Bitcoin apart because at the time, I was really doing a lot of work about um, um, blockchains and then why Bitcoin is so special. I discovered that um, there's, there's something they call the blockchain trilemma, right? So there's scalability, security, and decentralization, right? And um, most blockchains either have two of or one, or they have none, 
right? So, for, for example, if you think maybe a blockchain like Ethereum, Ethereum is, uh, would say, decentralized in a way, even though it's still centralized, and then uh, say it's secure, but it's not scalable because of the high fees and stuff like that, right? So, aside from Bitcoin, aside from all the other blockchains have this issue, but Bitcoin is the only blockchain that is secure, decentralized, and scalable. And it became scalable because of Lightning, right? And uh, with Lightning, I've been able to 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 do single transactions, like buy something for 300 CFA, which is just like a few cents. It's not enough to a dollar, and they don't cut me a charge, right? And time is like it's like the name goes, it's Lightning fast. So even the people that try to orange people have businesses and then I send them Lightning transactions, they'll be like, wow, like I never knew how this thing works. Because most people in Africa know Bitcoin for what Bitcoin is with the original network to send transactions. And sometimes it takes a bit of time, then it's expensive and stuff like that. So um, I always tend to orange peel people from the lightning perspective. So you don't need to be uh, using the main uh, Bitcoin network and there are lots of uh, uh, lightning wallets that you can use, like Wallet of Satoshi, uh, like the new, uh, the updated Blink wallet, there's Moon wallet and stuff like that. So... Um, most people are beginning to like even more because of um, lightning, and it's really reducing the, the challenge of, um, um, of of doing payment fast, right? So, for, for for example, at first we have something locally we call uh, mobile money, so it's given by the telcos, telecommunication. We have two, we have MT, and then we have Orange. So they have a mobile money service where, uh, let's say, if somebody has my, my my phone number, they can just send me money to my phone and then I do a transaction. But what's, what's so very crazy about that is the fact that uh, when you're sending out a transaction, the cut charges, you know, even when when some the person who sends the transaction has a they, they cut a charge, and then when you are sending money to somebody, they cut a charge. And when the person is also doing another transaction, they cut a charge. So way in, way out, you cut charges, right? And the charges sometimes is very ridiculous. And when you do that on Lightning, it becomes very, very easy. Now, the biggest challenge for most people who get into the space and they all that. So they ask me the question, when I do the transaction, then I want to convert my money back to fiat. What do I do, right? So we really don't have like, don't have yet an automatic platform that could help you convert your money back to fiat into your mobile money account or something like that. So the, right now, I have a group of, of guys who do like Bitcoin uh, trading and then uh, or the USDT and stuff like that. So I mostly just connect the people who have small businesses. So when they accept Lightning tr uh, transactions, we could go back to these people to convert their money back to fiat. Because since it's not mainstream yet, you cannot use your Lightning uh, payment even when you want to go buy from your supplier. So it's a whole uh, 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 um, chain that you have to orange peel. So you make the the fraud and buyer to be able to 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 not have to to to, to reach a point where they have to always convert their money back to fiat in order to 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 function very well in the, in the society but i think uh it's it's challenging and then it's a good work in progress because for any new person i meet there's something i learned it opens my head to different places and then better ways to arrange people and then convince people and tell them that this thing is going to take over and you have to be part of it and stuff like that yeah and I know that you educate a lot of people on Bitcoin in your country. And, um, you know, there's a rise of all these alternative cryptocurrencies out there, especially in Africa. Um, Africa is rife with a lot of different entrepreneurs and companies coming in trying to, you know, grab that untapped potential, that that market, that untapped market of, of investors that are hungry for a solution and for a way out. And, you know, how do you feel about Bitcoin maintaining its dominant position as the de facto digital currency in Africa? Or do you believe that there's a different cryptocurrency that's coming out there now that might actually end up replacing Bitcoin? Or do you just feel strongly about Bitcoin and don't think that much will change on that front? Um, I, I think that um, Bitcoin doesn't have a rival, right? And um, there's, there's no way there will come a point in time everybody will be talking about Bitcoin, 
That's for sure. Yeah. That's a that's a future that nobody can take away. So it's just like exactly like the like the internet. You didn't need to ask the internet to do whatsoever. But today nobody can deal without it. Even my yeah. grandma and the and the village needs to call me on WhatsApp. She just puts a video and then she can call me, right? And I believe that within some few maybe 10, 15 years from now, Bitcoin is gonna to get to that place. That's a that's a fact, right? And now coming back to our present um um, um situation right um before like getting deep into like bitcoin and stuff i had to give myself some opportunity to understand altcoins right the, the like shit coins and all of that and uh, uh, like i just mentioned before i realized one thing every other altcoin some way somehow is centralized because first you can locate the owner, the CEO, the company, the office and stuff like that. People go manipulate stuff, right? Like Ethereum moving from proof of work to proof of stake and then telling the whole world that uh, Bitcoin is energy uh, wasting and stuff, which is not true and, and, and stuff. We, we see really smart people saying things that are not true just because they want to have a bad name for Bitcoin and, and stuff like that. And <clears throat> every, every fight, every fight, Bitcoin always win without necessarily trying to trying to poke you or trying to put it in your face that you have to use me and stuff. It's 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 like this 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 beautiful girl on the other side of the street that knows that she's really beautiful. She doesn't need to prove he herself to you for you to see that she's beautiful. She knows it, right? That's that's how Bitcoin is. So you notice it and then you come to it. So Bitcoin doesn't come to you. You have to see it for what it is that you come to it, right? And that's the best thing I, I, I think uh, that, that that's about Bitcoin. And uh, I, I've not seen somebody who said uh, uh, when they discovered Bitcoin, then they have like a different kind of perspective, right? Except they got in from a wrong information because there are people who tell people about Bitcoin from without giving them the right information that they need. But for everybody that has the right information, when you come to Bitcoin, you must stay, right? So we we, we 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 it's a work in progress. There is really no other art, art coin whatsoever that can top with Bitcoin. And I don't even think it's a, it has to be a conversation because Bitcoin is the only true one and only cryptocurrency, right? And I understand why uh, plebs will say Bitcoin, not crypto, because the whole other crypto sphere. It's just some group of people who are playing on other people's ignorance to be able to make gains, right? And Bitcoin is right just there standing by. So when you finish all this mumbo jumbo that you guys are doing, I'm, I'll be standing here. If you want to join the train, we can come on, right? So, yeah. Yeah, and speaking on playing on people's ignorance, I think that um, financial inclusion and education is super important because it's one thing to tell um, people in Africa about Bitcoin and how to make money and how to invest. But, you know, coming from the culture that we come from, if people don't physically see it in front of them, it's hard for them to believe or to onboard into um, a money that, you know, they can't touch or feel with their hands. And um, I wanted to ask you about empowering individuals through financial inclusion with Bitcoin. And some examples of that would be you know, how can Bitcoin contribute to fostering um, financial inclusion in Africa, especially in those regions with limited access to traditional banking services? Yeah, so I think that's another um, uh, great question, which uh, is actually one of my my last mission to be able to to tell people, regardless of where they are, to, to, to think about uh, Bitcoin, right? And... Uh, like like we you, like we all know, Bitcoin doesn't know race, school standards or anything like that, right? Bitcoin is Bitcoin, no color. It's just like water. Anybody can use water to do whatever thing that they want to do with it, right? So if you think that the water I'm gonna use the water to maybe drink, I'm gonna use the water to bathe, I'm gonna use the water to maybe do something else, it's it's completely up to you, right? But the the thing I tell people. And sometimes these are the conversations I used to arrange, Bill. The thing I tell people, you must be able to think for yourself to be able to understand what you want to do with the water, right? Don't use the water to bathe when you're thirsty. 
it's, it's better to drink first before you you before now you bathe with the water and stuff like that meaning that if you even in africa you 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 you're in a situation because we have a really bad financial system which is urgent for us to fix so you need to be able to hold your money control your money self custody and stuff like that it's rather than you th you 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 thinking of investing and what i can make on bitcoin which is maybe like bathing with water you have to drink first by holding understanding how to do yourself cost custody and be free from the system before you start thinking of different ways to 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 um, invest and, and 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 stuff like that so <clears throat> people people in africa need bitcoin like i said more than any other continent because we don't have a choice it's like something that we've been waiting for for years right and the thing that makes me sometimes so surprised and at the same time sad is the people that i think satoshi nakamoto saw in his head before creating bitcoin i don't know but i used to have this feeling i think he saw africa like there were these people in africa that i need them to be saved from this really really uh, bad monetary um, system right and the funny thing is the people that this solution was created for don't even know what the solution is all about or how the solution works. And make, making it even worse, people who understood the solution before other people bring, don't give out the great right education that people need to be able to understand this solution. So they come for like for for, for example, yesterday I was uh, invited for a launch of a platform, right? So what I do mostly is any kind of crypto related events, I like to go there, see the mentality, to understand the market and then to see the level of ignorance, you know? But um, yesterday it down to me that um, maybe I shouldn't be going to these kind of places because you see people that are, uh, uh, are said to be smart, said to, to, to know what they're doing and stuff like that. But they're deliberately, I don't know if it's deliberate or it's ignorant or maybe they don't know what they're doing. They're deliberately misleading other people, right? So this platform is, is, is from France and then it's coming to Africa. And the guy comes, begins the conversation by saying that more than Bitcoin, this platform is going to help people in Cameroon to reach financial sovereignty. So imagine you a player who is a big hardcore Bitcoiner like me sitting in a hall like that and then somebody is holding that line of conversation. Would you keep yourself together or what, what, what would you do? So, so yesterday I felt really um, un uncomfortable, but just to give you an idea of how ignorant even the people who claim to know crypto how they can be how far it can get is really really dangerous so and and one thing that makes me happy is just to see how far we still have to go and then the, because i like challenges right so it's, it, at the same time that i feel sad at the same time i feel happy because it, it keeps just fueling the, the 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 mission that i that i that i have to to be able to help people to to understand what Bitcoin is. Yeah. yeah. And I know that you educate a lot of people on Bitcoin in your country. And, um, you know, there's a rise of all these alternative cryptocurrencies out there, especially in Africa. Um, Africa is rife with a lot of different entrepreneurs and companies coming in trying to, you know, grab that untapped potential, that that market, that untapped market of, of investors that are hungry for a solution and for a way out. And, you know, how do you feel about Bitcoin maintaining its dominant position as the de facto digital currency in Africa? Or do you believe that there's a different cryptocurrency that's coming out there now that might actually end up replacing Bitcoin? Or do you just feel strongly about Bitcoin and don't think that much will change on that front? Um, you know, education to me is the most important thing about Bitcoin. So before maybe it's talking about platforms and stuff like that, education is really, really very important. Right. So that's why I like the, the mission of, of Paxful. I could do like a whole meetup of Paxful without mentioning Paxful. Maybe you just see all of my t shirt but I just focus on telling people the philosophy, the, the, the value and, and everything good that comes with Bitcoin first. 
then now if you want to practice or something, then I can tell you that, okay, download the Paxful app and stuff like that. So I like the approach of first giving value, making people understand what the network is all about, right? And then, then before talking about platforms, the same reason that I um, created um, the, the book, uh, Bitcoin Kit, which, which, which helps uh, not just kids, but adults and young adults, parents, to understand what Bitcoin is. You know, there's this whole idea that says that um, when something is complicated, you need to be, someone needs to explain that thing to you like you're a kid. So it's the same philosophy be, behind the book. So it's for, for pre and no coiners. So people who are looking to understand what Bitcoin is and they never heard about it or they are interested, and then you just pick it up, you read it for like 30 minutes, you understand the history of money, you understand what the value of Bitcoin, you understand use cases like Lightning, basically, and Bitcoin adoption. So that's how the book is divided in those um, four chapters. And it was done in a comic because um, I also wanted it to be available that my son can look at the pictures and play with it. And uh, by the way, it was uh, one of the biggest inspirations for me to, to, to write a book um, like that. I didn't think I would ever be an author except, except for him because uh, when I look at him, I want to build generational world through Bitcoin, right? And which is something that I'm going to draft in. I want to build generational wealth. And when I look at my son, I cannot be building something he does not understand. So how then can I make him understand? I need to create something that makes him understand what I'm trying to do, right? So right now he knows all the characters in the book. <laughs> and then he knows the Bitcoin logo. And then, uh, you know, he knows a lot of things about Bitcoin and he's just to, it amazes me and, 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 uh, and, and, stuff, and stuff like that. So imagine imagine a, a small guy like that growing up, having good information about Bitcoin, how they could literally transform the world way better than we did, right? So coming back to, 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 to education and platforms, right? I believe that one of the best marketing strategies for any Bitcoin related platform is for them to invest heavily into education because once people feel like they're having value from you as a company, they're going to come, right? That's why Paxful could take that time to build um, eight to nine million loyal people who come to the platform to trade every day because the people understood what um, the whole philosophy uh, of, of Bitcoin is. And stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with that more, Zonda. And, you know, Paxful has been greatly instrumental in helping so many Africans. Um, I actually interviewed Ray, Ray Youssef, you know, the former CEO of Paxful, and he's just he just has a heart of gold and he really understands that the global south is going to really change the narrative and change the way that we look at Bitcoin because they need it the most. But Zonda, this this conversation has been incredible. I learned so much about your story, your mission, how you educate people, your book, you know, your son is in good hands. And I think that it starts with you. It starts with your insight and knowing that what you're doing, what you're accumulating right now in the form of Satoshis is going to actually end up not only changing your life, but change the lives of so many people in your community, as well as your kid. So before we go, could you give people your social media handles and any future endeavors that you might want the world to know about? Yeah, so um, I'm mostly very um, active on Twitter at uh, Bitcoin Toughest. And uh, uh, I do a bit of uh, Facebook sometimes, but Twitter is the place where anytime you join me, I'll make sure within the next 30 minutes I reply back. So Twitter at Bitcoin Toughest is the best place that someone can find me. There are people can also buy the book through Lightning on the website. It's the Bitcoin Fix, um, dot com, And then... Uh, Moving on with like developing what I was saying, um, I, I I got married back in uh, 2019, so I have a small, uh, really good family, which has really just readjusted a lot of things about how I think about my life and stuff. So, and I'm somebody who is very very keen on the philosophy of generational wealth, and I've never seen anything as great as a great tool to use to build generational wealth, which is Bitcoin, right? And um, what I did is I, I put some, some sets uh, for my son and then I'm going to give him the keys to the sets only by the time he's 18 years old. Right? <laughs> so imagine if I was supposed to do that with a bank, 
they, they will never get to a point where he has some money where he could be financially stable stable in the future for him to do what he can do with his life and stuff like that. So with this now, um, I'm, I'm currently working on a platform that is going to help parents, just like myself, to be able to serve generational wealth for their kids. So I'm just doing I'm just doing an extension of myself to other parents. So it's not a business that I'm trying to do because I feel like I saw an opportunity somewhere. I see the way it's been transformational to me. And then I just want to extend that. And, I, and through that, education is going to be one of our biggest, biggest, biggest uh, strategies. And then we're going to invest a lot in the education and stuff that we're already uh, doing. Because I want to also onboard new people to Bitcoin while helping them create generational wealth for their families. Yeah. Yes. Awesome, man. You know, that's what this podcast is all about. Educating people, letting people see unique voices that are global, not just in America or Europe. All over the world, people are talking about this digital asset. And, you know, you've now added to the legacy of this podcast is on this. So I appreciate you, my brother. And, um, you know, once again, thank you for being on the Bitcoin source, a Bitcoin conversation. Have a good one. Thank you so much. And uh, I was very excited to be here. You're such a great conversationalist. And uh, I can't wait for another invite, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 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 uh.